Hello, hello, and welcome to this latest edition of Five Round MMA. My name is Alex Ramirez. Alongside with me are my esteemed colleagues. Esteemed in what? I'm not too sure, but they're with me here. Albert <laughs> Sita and Guillermo Sita. Today's show is brought to you by brought to you by a fine line of sponsors. First of all, Rock and Green Eco Friendly Cleaner, Cleaner Products, uh, Five Rounds Clothing Line, and of course the R- 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 RMA Foundation Redemption Martial Arts. So, guys, how's it going? It's going good. I just won a soccer championship with my uh, soccer team that you I the that coach. coach. Yeah, so just got out of the rain with a big trophy. Yeah, we got rain in California again. Albert, how you doing? I I'm know doing we... horrible because the Dallas Cowboys just lost, yeah. and it was a rare thing for them to be to this lose? far. To, and, lose? No, to be this far oh, okay. in the playoffs like, oh, okay. and not choke it. <laughs> so there so you go. let's get your mind off of things. I figured today we'll jump right off in the bat, play a game I like to play. I like to call Mr. Matchmaker. So this game, uh, we'll pick out maybe five big matchups recently announced in the world of mixed martial arts. You just have to pretend to UFC because those are or the big matchups happen, right? Yeah. And uh, I want you guys your thoughts. If you like the matchup, hate the matchup, or you just don't care. So right off the bat, this one happened so quick we couldn't talk about last week. But uh, Benson Harrison versus Donald Cerrone. Donald Cerrone fill in for a late slate scratch for uh, Eddie Alvarez. So this will take place UFC Fight Night uh, next weekend, January 18th. Uh, Gamma, do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you not care? Uh, I love it. I think uh, it's... First of all, Cabo Cerrone is such on a streak right now, mm. and uh, why not avenge for his loss? Two losses. Or, yeah, his, his rival Benson Henderson, yeah. and I think a, a win over Benson Henderson will get guarantee him a title shot. Really? So, and for Benson Henderson, why not cool off someone that's so hot right now? That's a good point. Uh, Albert, do you love it? Do you hate it? Uh, I'm kind of split. I'm split on this. I love it and I hate it. Mm. I love it as a fan because you know. Uh, I love to see that a uh, fighter's four to two. You know, Cowboy Cerrone just fought literally a couple weeks, two ago. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and he's already not only is he willing to get back into a, a, a fight, he's fighting against a guy World he has never guy. won against. <laughs> uh, he has two losses, and and the guy was on top of his game until this previous fight. Mm. So um, I hate the fact that this. This is the pony that he has to fight just because I would like to see the best of the two. Mm. And I don't want Don Cerrone to get the third loss and maybe people will speculate because he didn't have enough. Yeah. yeah, and but as as a fan, I love it. I mean, how how amazing is this? Yeah, well, I, I just think it's awesome that Cowboy Cerrone said he would not leave Vegas until another match yeah, well, lined got, up for him. He so. got yeah. what he wanted. Um it's kind of actually people thought oh, this is gonna be a war, but the first matchup is really good. But people, I think people forget that the second one yeah, ended second pretty one, quickly. Yeah. It was a choke hold, a trap uh, out. For Benson Henderson, so uh, maybe, maybe I think. Well, obviously from there, Cerrone has evolved into a better fighter, right? I think there's a lot of mental game in in this fight coming up too. Benson Henderson, uh, kind of made it public that this could be his last fight, and if it is his last fight, then um, he he's gonna move up to uh, 155 pounds. So, uh, it, it, and in the other way, uh, on the other flip side, the other mental game I think it is um is with Donald Cerrone. Which is he has two losses with Benson Henderson and hey, uh, the two fighters. He's the hottest one, right? Yeah. So uh, obviously, I mean, uh, Benson Henderson got knocked out. It's funny because I follow Cabo Cerrone on Instagram, mm. uh, and he said, you know, everybody says that Benson Henderson has my number, and he's like, yeah. but I got a new number. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and I think Cabo Cerrone in general has shown not a different game plan, but I yeah. think he's he's stepping up. All right, so we'll see. We have uh, only a few days away, so it should be great. The second one, Anthony Pettis has a new challenger for his title, Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, that one's set for UFC 185 on March 14th. Albert, do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you not care? Is this the right guy for the title shot for against Anthony Pettis? Uh, I, I, I want to love it, mm. but I just I can't <clears throat> I can't fully love it just knowing that Duno Santos isn't truly the number one contender, Dos even Santos. though he had an impressive win over Benson Henderson. Yeah. Um, I really think uh, Kani Well, he's still hurt though. I know he's no, still no, hurt, no. but that's why like I want to love it because you know there's nothing much I can do, but that's not the matchup I want to see. And this is matchmaker. And that's the that's mm-hmm. not the match sure. I want to see. I totally agree. I don't think uh, it's the matchup I really wanted. Uh, the thing is, Dos Anjos is just not well known, and he's not known for spectacular finishes, spectacular submissions. I think he's he's more known for his gruesome injury than anything else. I mean, when he broke his jaw, um, oh, was he was bad, out yeah. for a while. I mean, they had a wired his mouth shut uh, because of the injury. And I think it's tough to sell a storyline between Dos Anjos and. Uh, 
Anthony Pettis because I, I really don't see a storyline. Uh, well, other, 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 right other than other than Dos Anjos yeah. beating Benson Henderson like viciously. Well, beating uh, Benson to, Henderson. To, Anthony, uh, to give credit to Anthony Pettis, he's trying to sell his fight. He's like uh, Dos Anjos is unknown. He's the only other guy besides uh, myself, Anthony Pettis, to beat Benson Henderson and Donald Cerrone. So the, I guess he's under the radar, like you guys said, but it's not really a sexy matchup you want Anthony Pettis with. Yeah, exactly. Right? Anthony Pettis is a superstar. Mr. Say, Mr. Wheaties, Reebok. Well, like I said, I want to love it. I, I'm not sure if I do. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, well, well, I was just going to say, it's gonna be if it's on pay-per-view, it's going to be hard to sell that pay-per-view. Well, let's see. Uh, they do have a, a one match that was announced for this pay-per-view, a heavyweight bout between Alistair Orvim and Warrior Nelson, USC 185 as and well. Still, uh, not not a sub. Do you love it? Do you hate it? I hate it. Get him all shaking his head. I hate, hate it. Why? Uh, well, I hate it just because it, it doesn't match up. It doesn't make sense to me. For either guy? Uh, for either guy. I mean, like, wh- a victory for Roy Nelson, wh- where does that get him? Mm-hmm. Alistair Overeem was to the point where he's about to get cut. Yeah. And same thing with uh, uh, Alistair Overeem. Yeah, he beat a guy that Dana White really doesn't like. It's mm-hmm. not going to get him anywhere besides, yeah. hey, thank you, Alistair Overeem. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? Do you hate it? Roy Nelson versus I love Green? it. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because this heavyweight division, uh, you have to start trimming the fat. No pun intended. <laughs> and, uh, I hope it was put in. That's great. <laughs> and uh, and we, we got we got two heavyweights here. Now, how are you going to trim the fat when there is no, no, no I think, con- I think real we contenders. have two heavyweights here that have overstayed their welcome in the heavyweight division. Mm. Uh, Roy Nelson has had his chance. Yeah. Overman has had his chance. And we're playing the same fiddle a little bit too long. Yeah. And I really think the, the fat needs to trim here in the heavyweight division. We need to start putting pushing these new guys, yeah. which I think are more exciting, better fighters. So I think it's a perfect match because I really think whoever loses this match might end up in Bellator. Like, I don't yeah. think so. I, I, I mean, about Bellator? <laughs> well, yeah, about Bellator. <laughs> getting cut in general. Yeah. Because I, I think they go... They, they come both coming off well. Roy Nelson coming off a loss and Alistair Overeem coming off a win. Yeah, I think, but they they go win, loss, win, loss. Yeah. Exactly, win, loss. not very consistent, so, right? It, but it, it's not to a but, point. But if you look at UFC's uh, record, if you're getting older, if you're actually a veteran in the sport, and you keep win, if, if, if you keep winning and losing, mm. they're they're gonna cut you. I mean, Jake Shields. Uh, the as long got, as you're selling pay per views and people want to see you fight. They're, you're gonna no, stick around. I, the I think if you're bouncing and back and forth, Duffy needs to get back at I'll start over him <laughs> anyway. I think yeah. what Gimmel forgets is the price tag on these veterans. Once I think they reach a certain point, whatever, a little I too think, expensive. I right? think they're getting pretty expensive, but for what? Yeah. Think about it. True. So uh, these next two matches will be uh, near and dear to Albert's heart. First one, uh, Leona Machida versus Rock, Luke Rockhold is being slated for UFC on Fox in April, April 18th. Um, Albert, I'm sorry, do you love it? Do you hate it? I love it, love it, and love it. Uh, Machida needs to stay relevant mm-hmm. and he needs high caliber opponents to stay in the top five. I think uh, by him demolishing some of the lo- lower tier fighters, mm. yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, it looks cool, but I don't think it, 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 it gives him an argument to get another crack at the title, which he ultimately, that's what he wants is another crack at the title. Mm. And he's not going to do it uh, fighting the the, the mid tier level fighters. CB and division. Luke Rockhold, I think, is is red hot. Mm. I think Luke Rockhold is is in the top five. I think uh, Luke Rockhold is knocking on the door of the championship. So I, I love the, the, the match. Even though I'm a Machida fight, uh, a fan, it, I think for both fighters, whoever wins pretty much gets a lineup for the title shot. Love I, it? I love it. I think, uh, again, we talked about uh, Leroy Machida's legacy and does he deserve to be a Hall of Famer, this and that. Or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think... Well, there's uh, one guy had a big problem with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But again, <laughs> to me, Leroy Machida is fighting the top, probably, to me, second best middleweight in the in the world. Yeah. So again, a win over him, I Machida again, right back in the title yeah. picture. And same thing with Luke Rockle. He's been knocking on the door, knocking on the door. I think a win with over Machida... Propels them to a fight versus Chris Weidman. And you think it's kind of a, you think this match is a little bit of a stalling tactic, especially with uh, Daniel White just announced that Anderson Silva, if he's uh, victorious over Nick Diaz, he'll get a title shot in the middleweight division, or no? No, you you know what? Uh, I don't believe anything Daniel White says anymore. He can tell me that he has signed up Fedor and Brock Lesnar until I see it, the poster. <laughs> until I see the poster. The day, I don't believe anything that guy says anymore because he flip-flops left and right. Roy McDonald's supposed to have a title shot. He doesn't have a title shot now. <laughs> I don't care what he says anymore. Until I see the poster, I don't believe it. All right, so speaking of that, you guys want to talk? Oh, I just want to say with Anderson Silva, it really depends on how he comes back yeah, against Nick Diaz. Knows? I mean, it's, it's to say he's going to tell shot if he wins. Come exactly. on, let the guy exactly. fight first. All right, so the last one, this one should be tough for you to hear, Albert. Uh, Roy McDonald is slated against uh, Hector Lombard for UFC 186 in April, on April 25th. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Gary. What do you love? Do you hate it? Uh, I hate it. I think hate it? It, I, I, for who? Why? 
I hate it for Roy McDonald Lumber, because uh, <laughs> Hector Lumber. That's scary. <laughs> what? Hector no, Lumber. That's scary. Isn't it's not the Hector Lumber? It's just okay. So uh, Roy McDonald was promised a title shot. Now yeah. he has everything to lose. Yeah. And Hector Lumber has everything to gain. How is that fair for Roy Mac? Mac? That's the only reason I hate it. Yeah. it. It's not fair for one fighter when it it seems re- like a great opportunity for Hector Lumber. Yeah. So that's why I hate it. I love it and hate it. I mean, uh, I I knew this 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 moment was gonna come. I knew I knew it was it, it was already it was, it was written in the stars. They, it was what? written in the stars. The Red King's prophet, but, but prophecy. I, but I was hoping it was later on where um, I got to enjoy both fighters a little bit more, and then one of them would you know eventually fight for my affection. You know, because that's what I think. <laughs> that's this, I think that's the ultimate goal, right? I think this is what this match is all about for me. Winner uh, takes a hundred percent of my band wagon <laughs> and and I'm gonna ride that until they get the championship I hope they know what's on the line I wanna see <laughs> the, the, the only thing I, I look at it is it, they were eventually gonna match up anyway even yeah. if Roy Mack became champion yeah, but this, didn't. This soon yeah but I, I I hate agreeing with Guillermo but it's the honest truth uh, Roy McDonald has everything to lose and Hector Lombard has everything to gain both of these fighters are in the brisk of a title shot but I think Roy McDonald was already guaranteed that mm-hmm. so it just adds I think more pressure to him and again if he loses um, I think he has to start all and the way back. If Hector Lombard loses, though, yeah. I think he two fights and he's irrelevant again, and mm-hmm. he might even get another title shot. The only thing with Rory Mack is uh, we've always questioned his, uh, you know, in a very uh, tough spot or uh, live up to the moment type of match. Yeah, uh, it seems like he got a really important match and he kind of fights. Not to the p- level that we expect. He's always kind of like uh, you know how the NBA when a, a real good team faces a really bad team they play they play down to level competition. Exactly. You know that's a rumor, Don. Like he kind of plays no, down to so, level. So, so, sometimes I feel like the, no, I I hundred percent agree with that because the I think the perfect example is the Robbie Lawler one mm-hmm. where I think he did not meet his expectations and it wasn't until he got knocked down on his butt that he like said you know what let me turn it up. let me turn yeah. it up and you we saw how that that fight ended Mm -hmm. but at the same time he was playing down on the level of him so i think it's a another learning experience for rory mack if he can rise up to the level of that you know how important this bout is because it really is a number one contender match again again for rory (laughs) mack well so that's about wraps up for mr matchmaker you know i'm gonna give the win to albert he's a little sad right now dallas cowboys i'm gonna throw him a bone even though he he agreed with me (laughs) once once. <laughs> All right, so coming up next, I want to talk about the John Jones debacle dilemma that's facing the UFC right now. So stick around, guys. Please visit FiveRoundMMA.com on our social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Five Round MMA. Thank you for sticking around. We are back now. I want to jump into the biggest news last week was just what the three days removed from UFC 182, Jones versus Daniel Cormier, John 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 uh, John Jones. Comes away with the biggest win of his career and only feels there to be sus- not suspended, but news breaks that he enters rehab uh, facility because he tested positive for cocaine a month before. So, um, when you guys read this, what was the initial reaction, Albert, when you read it? Uh, I was disgusted, yeah. first of all. Uh, that, was, that was my first reaction. Uh, and then when I read uh, Dana White's quote on it, yeah. uh, I mean, I was about to literally uh, stop watching UFC. Mm. It disgusted me to a point where uh, I almost felt like I, I'm never going to watch UFC again because I think they embarrassed the organization. And then when Dana White made his comments, I think he pretty much took like 10 steps backwards. And the, now UFC doesn't even look like a legit company to me. Mm. It seems like some kind of uh, private company owned by somebody and they just do whatever they want, when they want. That's what it is, isn't it? Gamma, what was your yeah, initial? No, <laughs> no but I'm yeah. saying they, they want to be, be up there with the NFL, yeah. NHL, NBA, and I feel like now they're light years away from yeah. that well, because of what just well, happened. We'll talk about that next, but give me your initial reaction when you heard the news. My initial reaction is tainted. Mm. Uh, so I felt like uh, his very good win against Daniel Cormier is tainted now. Mm. Not only, yeah, maybe it didn't help him for his performance on that night, mm. but it still taints not only his, uh, you know, visually yeah. or, you know, how he's seen uh, to the audience, but also taints the UFC as well because – Exact. I saw a lot of fighters putting up things like, "Oh, this person tested positive for marijuana." Matt Riddle had to win off of on Twitter. Yeah, because I mean, he <laughs> got fired for yeah, for marijuana, marijuana, use, marijuana. Yeah. for marijuana use. And to me, cocaine is a little bit uh, <laughs> more than the marijuana. Well, to, yeah. to 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 quote Rick James. <laughs> yeah, really. The famous it's a, it's a hell of a drug. Yeah, <laughs> but um, that's that's my point. I, I you know, and then after it, you know, you do want to have encouraging words. You know, I'm proud of him. It's, 
going into yeah. rehab and stuff like that. But, but you want to be really genuine, right? Yeah, but it especially doesn't... The it, circ- especially the circumstances behind it, right? Yeah, and I, I feel like uh, it, it's not consistent. It's, yeah. And it's not fair for all the fighters. It's, it's, how, do you, how do you go from one one separate... Just because this guy's making you money, that he he's the exception to the rule. Yeah. And I don't think that that's... Fair. I don't think it's. Uh, I I hope Bellator World Series of Fire c- come up yeah. and tr- start treating their fighters a little bit better because it's really not fair. So Albert, give us the rundown of what happened in this drug, the whole story. Because I know you read a bunch of articles on it. I'll just give people like what what when, when was the test taken? When when the when when was the results? So given? the the test was taken in uh, like December, early, early December, right? Yeah, and um, the I guess the the Las Vegas Commission has come up and said, you know what, it was our mistake that they they even tested for the cocaine mm. because that's not a drug that they test. They normally test, and I guess uh, somehow it got m- m- there's a mishandle there, and they still tested for it. Um, the they have to uh, publicly show the records of what they test stuff like that. So they when the test results came back, they informed uh, the UFC. Um. Uh, uh. That they did. Te- this they, is the, like December twenty third, right? What's yeah. That? And so, um, they they get the news. Um, but again, they can't do nothing about it because first of all, it's um, out of competition. It's out of competition. And by by stating it's out of competition, what they're trying to say is, it's not within the realm of the fight. Even though uh, a fighter trains three months for a fight, it's out of competition. Yeah. Uh, but they say it's not within the realm of the actual so fight. What's the whole point of a surprise uh, drug test? Then? They they mm-hmm. knew the public was the public records are gonna get out a day after the the competition or a, a, a couple yeah, days yeah, after. Yeah. That's why uh, as soon as the news broke, John Bon Jones was already in a rehab center, and UFC pretty much already had damage control or already 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 set up because all this was known way before the fight even started they tested him again uh before and after the fight again they don't test for cocaine Mm. so there's no reason to even yeah and now it's the it seems like they were trying to save face yeah and i mean like you said so they get like albert they get this whole long spiel about we care about john jones and i'm so proud of him we had a a whole like a week before this this guy if he he has like a a cocaine problem or drug problem why not isn't his livelihood better and worth more than a pay-per-view event exactly but uh again dana wire they already planned this out and he had a quote for that too saying that um uh, this affects the fight in no way uh, because we had the doctors check him and it didn't affect like the way he's his eyes sigh his re, his uh, reaction. But, yeah, but to it's, Alex's it's, point yeah. is the, it didn't seem like the UFC was looking for the best interest of John. No, exactly. Yeah. For the best interest of the UFC. Yeah, they try. Fight, they they, they enter they, rehab exactly. instead of saying enter rehab yeah. now. It will postpone this fight. Or whatever, because exactly, and it's kind of basically like you said too inconsistencies about like okay, so well technically what he does in his free time is not really affecting how he does in the cage, right? But then then why should Matt Riddle and Nick Diaz be suspended for what they do in their free time? Exactly, and uh, I, mean, I, I don't know if people know this, but Ray Rice Ray, Ray Rice's thing happened out of competition. <laughs> <That's true>. uh, so <laughs> if Dana White says to me that was out of competition, yeah, when he got punished for what he did, it was out of competition yeah mm-hmm. i mean so like, go back to your point uh, but it, it, just before i leave yeah. it too when anthony rumble johnson supposedly got suspended for domestic violence it was out of competition right yeah okay so uh, apparently out of competition does shouldn't mean anything to the ufc well, so it should mean yeah. something to the to the to to the ne- 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 nevada commission yeah but to the ufc it shouldn't mean nothing because these are your fighters you should be responsible for the way if, yeah. for their actions well because we just said about the ufc wanting to be like the nfl nba well exactly there is a system that checks and balances in all these sports organizations there's, there's unions, no check and balance in the there's UFC. unions to make sure no one side has too much power but in the ufc it's not like they want to perceive like they are a league and that's exactly why they have a lawsuit yeah but it's kind of weird. Did you think I'm like like this? They don't want to perceive themselves as as big as this guy, but in actual they're not. Yeah, they're really not. I mean, they 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 pick and choose what is best for public image. Yeah. But really, all they're doing is like hurt. a company, like a yeah. private company. Yeah. And really, they're hurting their image even more. Is yeah. Is trying to see like all these guys are just greedy people trying to take advantage exactly. of the even even like of fighters. Even down to like the the media almost kind of because especially with the whole share dog, I understand that they're banned from all UFC events. What they were. So even like the media is kind of really afraid to, to go in and dig deep because you yeah. know if they if they go digging deep in the UFC or maybe take a shot at them they're gonna be banned from all their all their events and there goes their yeah, livelihood. So, so this goes their this and, <laughs> yeah. chance to the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> and in the, the one That's time. That's like not sitting in a cage the, side the, anymore. The one characteristic that Dana White has, I guess, that people at least respect is that. Um, He's very aggressive when it comes to stuff like that, and he likes to say, you know, you gotta own up to your own thing, whatever. Yeah. What 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 really 
uh, cheeses me off about this whole situation Jesus, I like that word. Is, is that uh, they're here saying afterwards that they're very, this is, he's all like, screw uh, fighting. This is the man's life. He has kids, this and that. He's a grown man. He's yeah. not. He's not a nineteen-year-old product. He's not. He's, he's, right? he's not a high school student. He's a grown man. Anthony Pettis said it best. Uh, you have to be responsible. You have to have the fortitude to say no to people. He was in a position. He's a grown man, and he can make, make his own decisions. Talk about and, John and, Jones, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about John Bone Jones, and, la- and the only person to blame here is himself. And I think for you seeing Dana White to kind of protect them. It, it, it shows uh, it shows what kind of character he really is. He yeah. needs to man up and take responsibility. He's the one that said yes. Nobody else did. Uh, and and I'm gonna just uh, I I want to leave it at this too. If Michael Jordan would have done this, uh, do you think he it, it, people would look up to him as much as they do now? No. Well, I think this is a perfect example why John Bon Jones would never be a role model that he thinks he is in his head because he really isn't. Well, that's it. If that, anything, yeah. he's becoming less and less of a role well, model. Well, and that's it. Honestly, I I read an article. I forgot where, but like talk about John Jones is the biggest star in the UFC. But is he the biggest athlete in the United States? No. You got like 20 football players ahead think, of him, 20 uh, NBA players ahead of him. You got I, like freaking two I, tennis I think players uh, ahead he, of him. he yeah. thinks uh, <laughs> everybody wants to see him. It's that people want, I think now people want to see him lose or yeah. not be successful. That I, whole, and I think that's what it's the heel thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, you saw so many stuff like what, within a half an hour of the news break. How many memes did you guys see yeah. of John Jones? It, 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 so. here's, here's the real crazy part because when Mike Tyson had his reign, uh, he wasn't the best guy out there. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't the best role model. Yeah. But yet, people still were able to get behind him because uh, for he he just had something uh, uh, that that you wanted to watch and and you wanted to see. Well, it was his fighting stuff. Yeah, yeah, and which I think John Jones doesn't even have that. Yeah. I mean, you don't even want to see, uh, 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 you know, you don't want to get behind, well, this, you, get behind this guy you at You want all. to see him yeah. fail. And it, it just, go, on, go back to the whole UFC and, and the Athletic Commission. It just seems, it has to be the, the Nevada Athletic Commission, too. And uh, it, the blueprint for how to not play by the rules in combat sports, a la boxing, I think he's been written a long time ago. And the fact that UFC tries to hide it under being a league banner, it just seems too fishy out there. There's so many times you said, Guillermo, too many inconsistencies where mm-hmm. the commission and the UC are on the same page. And, and like, let's go to Brazil for this card. And then, because, we'll, do, and then we'll, yeah. we'll do our own even, thing. Even and, the whole TRT t- ban that just kind of came instantly, it just it just frustrates me that the research isn't done ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, let, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that TRT in one way or, or, or shape or form is cheating. Yeah. But if you don't have the research to back it up, what gives you the right to just say, you know what, it's gone? Same yeah. thing with marijuana. Have they even done real research to say like you know this one should be banned Unfair but not cocaine? And, yeah. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe uh, you should do some research to back up when you ban something yeah. or when you don't ban so something. A lot of stuff doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense in your head. Like why why how is there lack of communication and when you're the biggest yeah. mixed martial arts organization in the so, world? Something and, like that. Yeah. And it's just so official that it had to be the Nevada Athletic Commission. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you when I because I never used to watch their their little committee meetings what they yeah. had until UFC started airing it. Yeah. And I watched it. Man, these things look. Beyond janky, I seen city council meetings way better, orga- way better organized, way better, better set up than what I, what I saw yeah. the way they had it. But the blueprint's been there for how to get around the rules in these combat sports, right? Everyone? Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, uh, all these promoters, you go back to the the Don King and you know, the Bob Arums of the, the boxing world. It's kind of like it's been yeah. there for forever now. And so. It's funny because Dana White uh, is known to you know you know diss these guys yeah. and put them down, and he's just becoming one of them too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts, Cameron? What thoughts? Well, the only thing is, uh, it just seems like uh, Dana White is is fast to criticize other people for criticizing him. Yeah. When he should, you know, look in the mirror and. And it's it's, it's kind of I mean it does talk to like the first place he goes to is Fox Sports on their show that would they have a deal together? Mm-hmm. So you kind of know that Prusa's okay. We're not gonna lay into you too hard. I, I think Kenny Florian asked the questions right, mm-hmm. and you know he's like, Kenny Florian's gonna like grill him too hard on the questions because. Kenny and that's why has a job to protect. That's why I think Boss Ruin is the best <laughs> <laughs> MMA I want, uh, commentator. Yeah. I really want to see Dana White go into like sixty minutes or something like that. Uh, exactly, yeah. and, and just you know, hard questions. If he's not scared, and be, if, he's not, yeah. if he's not scared, if if yeah. hey, don't be don't be scared, homie. Yeah. Uh, go to six, <laughs> go, go to sixty minutes, Dana White. So uh, a little side note, uh, doing research for this, I came across an article by GQ magazine on the uh, sleaziest people in all sports. It was released by September two thousand fourteen. 
And uh, it was about like 25 people, like the likes of Donald Sterling and Ray Rice and yeah. all the infamous people in sports. And just so you guys know, uh, Dana White was ranked number eight. <laughs> uh, above Lance Armstrong, but below War Machine. So at number eight, sitting right between. So I, think, I think that says Worlds. I mean, GQ, they, they GQ was just look no, uh, any magazine. Number too. one was ranked Donald Sterling, so he's, he's in the top ten. But of course, if you ask him, people love to hate, and that's yeah. not necessarily true. Yeah, so um, it's a system of checks and balances. We'll see if uh, that ever That's comes all up. we want to see. Check yeah. and balances. Yep. So we want to see the UFC and to see, to see prove that MMA is actually. That's what, what all the people want to see. Just a check and balance. <laughs> <laughs> My account as well. Yeah, really. <laughs> Personally, yeah, and then something to watch. Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, you guys need more talk about? Anything to talk about? No? Conor McGregor's fighting. No, pretty soon. Conor McGregor um, was excited. Take, he already he announced will two take, minutes or less. He, <laughs> he, will, he, will, he will take up our whole podcast next week. Yeah. So we don't need to mention him this week. Well, I, I'm just excited. That I'm that first two minute block. I'm excited to see that knockout. <laughs> and I already said if he wins, he gets a towel shot. So until, I think I think until gonna, I see the poster, I don't believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're gonna uh, fly Jose Auto out there. He's supposed to be out there in the front row. They said or wherever they, they sit at. Nice. So I think. Uh, and did I say champion 2015 for Conor McGregor? Oh yeah, did you see that right? Yeah, I said that. <laughs> said it. So until then, until next week, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Five Round MMA. That's F I V E. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and Podomatic. And a big thank you to all of our sponsors, Rocket Green Eco Friendly Products. Follow them on Twitter at Rocket Green Soap, Five Rounds Clothing Line, and them on Twitter at Five Rounds Wear. And of course, Redemption Martial Arts. Follow them on Twitter at Redemption underscore MA. Albert, what do you got? Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for listening. Don't forget, SmackDown is now going to be on Fridays, and it's going to debut this week on with Thursday. Daniel Bryan. So uh, make sure you, you watch. You play W Immortals yet? The game. Conor McGregor's no. Nope. The real. Oh man, I already forgot my yeah. my little catchphrase. Cream of the crop. Oh no, Conor McGregor is the real role model. Cream of the crop. <laughs> Time to get grimy. <laughs> <laughs>